The San Antonio Spurs appear to be kicking off another winning streak that broke last night when they fell to the Toronto Raptors. The silver and black took to the court without starters Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell. The Spurs also had to sit forward Jeremy early in the second quarter. That's because his missed, he missed a game when he had flu-like symptoms. So last night, his minutes on the court were restricted. Although the Spurs were able to take the lead in the second quarter, they couldn't keep the momentum going. The final score, 143 to 100. This is the team's largest loss in the coach pop era. Minutes are the best thing for young guys so they can see uh, what they're doing well, what they can do better, that sort of thing. So uh, they, they tried hard, but uh, they were up against something that was a little bit different for them. They switched one through five. They did not passing lanes. We got to get better with moving off the ball and back door. But that's a really good veteran team. That was a good test for us. I think it's clearly the best team we probably played all year, and that was a good test for us. Up next for the silver and black, the Los Angeles Clippers. Tip off for this home game is set for 7 tomorrow night. Real Muto. Bouncing ball to third. Picked by Bregman. Throw across in time. The Astros have a World Series no-hitter. An exciting and historic night for Houston Astros. Game four of the World Series, four Houston Astro pitchers helped throw the second no-hitter ever in World Series history. Cristian Javier pitched six innings, Brian Abreu pitched the seventh inning, and Rafael Montero pitched the eighth, and Ryan Presley closed the game out in the ninth. The only previous no-hitter in the World Series was a perfect game by Don Larson of the New York Yankees against the Brooklyn Dodgers in 1956. And here's a look at last night's final score. Astros win it 5-0. The series is now tied 2-2. Game 5 is tonight in Philly. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Houston and Philly aren't only facing off at the ballpark. They're also playing on the gridiron tonight. The Eagles will take on the Texans tonight at 7:15 at NRG Stadium in Houston. A man accused of conning his way into college without the price tag that usually comes with all that experience. How he was hiding there in plain sight. And more drug makers are working vaccines that pull double and even triple duty fighting several viruses at once. In the next half hour, we have a look at the four projects in the works right now. Justin Finch reports Republicans say Biden's words are just a distraction. Term election closing argument condemning political violence like the brutal hammer attack. Capital. The assailant ended up using a hammer to smash Paul's skull. After the assailant entered the home asking, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Those are the very same words used by the Where are you, Nancy? Biden blaming former President Trump for spreading. Players are now running for office. There are candidates running for every. Who won't commit. They will not commit to accepting the results. political violence on elected officials and poll workers as we approach Election Day. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
Doctors and medical providers across the country are rallying together today for what they're calling a National Day of Action in defiance of abortion bans. The group Georgia, Ohio, Oklahoma, and Texas, all states that have implemented a complete or near total ban on abortions following the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade earlier this year. Pfizer announcing it has launched a study of combination COVID and flu vaccines. Today, Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech announcing that the first participant has received a dose of a phase one in that trial. The shot contains Pfizer's updated bivalent COVID booster and its investigational flu vaccine. The bivalent booster targeting the original COVID strain and two Omicron subvariants. And other vaccine makers are also studying a combination of vaccines. Novavax is working on one that has COVID and flu. Meanwhile, Moderna is also developing a combined flu and COVID vaccine and another combination vaccine that targets COVID, flu and RSV. Taking a look outside with live cam. Yes, it's humid. Ursula, you asked earlier, will our beards be affected? It's time to get some beard oil, I think, Justin. Yeah, be prepared. <laughs> Maybe so. These are all things I haven't thought through yet. I'm just still waiting for it to grow in, but uh, good points nonetheless. Hey, we've got some football tonight. Thursday night football. Some games I think were moved to tonight uh, to account for the potential for a few storms coming up tomorrow. So let's look at the forecast. If you're heading out to any of the games, uh, likely partly cloudy by this time. And we'll see southerly winds fairly breezy, 10 to 15 miles per hour. Kickoff 80 degrees, halftime 77. That sunsets around 646. So as we look at the numbers right now, 72 in Boulevardy, 75 Converse, 77 in Seguin, 77 Divine. Starting to warm up some, starting to see some peaks of sun in spots. It'll still take a little while longer for skies to clear here in San Antonio. And they won't completely clear. We'll go mostly to partly cloudy this afternoon. 79, 2 p.m., 82 at 3 p.m., 82 at 5 o'clock. And then looking at 79 by 8 p.m. with partly cloudy skies. And again, those good southerly winds. We're going to see some more drizzle and fog tomorrow, but that is not the case Saturday. Some gusty winds on Saturday behind a frontal boundary. We'll talk more about what temperatures look like over the weekend coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you so much. Now we have a shocking story that's going to bug anybody who paid their tuition and dorm fees at college. A major con pulled on a prestigious university undetected. Officials at Stanford say a man pretended to be a student for almost a year. ABC's Kanye Whitworth explains he reportedly lived in various dorms across campus posing as a student. Shock and outrage over an alleged imposter at one of the country's most prestigious universities. I thought he was a student. He said he was a student. The Stanford Daily reporting that a man accused of posing as a student living in several different dorms on Stanford's campus for nearly a year. He certainly was not a person who was just making do on Stanford's campus, living off of the excesses. No, he was a part of this community. He was living alongside people and very much interacting with them on a day to day basis. William Curry, seen in these photos, presenting himself as a Stanford student on various social media profiles, including a dating app and Instagram. He had a whole Instagram page that many of my friends had already followed that said he was Stanford class of 25, that he was a Koch scholar, um, that he transferred from Duke. The Stanford Daily reporting he'd been squatting in at least five different dorms since December of 2021. The Daily speaking with him in a new interview. So what were you doing here? Uh, I mean, just, you know, live, live in the, living the normal Stanford life, you know, socializing, you know, meeting people uh, as you do in college. Curry ultimately caught living in the basement of Crothers Hall last week and was served a stay away order Thursday. Stanford University telling ABC News Curry was cited for violating the law and removed from campus that December. But according to the Daily, he returned several times, each time with a new story. The school apparently aware Curry was an imposter, but according to the Daily, they didn't send out a warning. The school also saying, despite attempts to cite him for trespass, they weren't able to locate him until last week. 
One student told us that they never saw him repeat an outfit, which is pretty impressive uh, for someone who doesn't live here. Stanford telling ABC News in a statement, while Stanford has protocols and policies in place to prevent non-students from entering and living on our residences, the unique aspects of this case and Mr. Curry's persistence and ability to ingratiate himself with our student community have made it clear that gaps exist in those protocols. studios, including Disney and Sony Pictures. Meanwhile, Twitter is pushing ahead with plans to charge for content, and that includes videos. The company is working on a feature that would let people post videos and charge users to view them, and the company would take a cut of those proceeds. That's according to an internal email obtained by the Washington Post. And the Federal Reserve approved a, a 3.75% to 4%. That's the highest the Fed's funds rate has been since January 2008. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. The Powerball. Powerball, the cash value of the prize will be roughly $745.9 million. I could use that, could you? I can absolutely use it. All right, no ticket matching all six numbers last night. The next drawing is Saturday. And it is the second largest jackpot in Powerball history. The biggest Powerball jackpot of all time was $1.586 billion in January of 2016. There is going to be something very special in the sky next Tuesday. On November 8th, a total lunar eclipse will be in the sky nationwide. A lunar eclipse is when the path of our nearest neighbor in space enters the Earth's shadow. Now, during a full moon phase, that causes the light from the Earth's sunrises and sunsets to be cast on the moon, causing it to temporarily appear red. Now, if you miss Tuesday's Sky Show, you're going to have to wait until 2025 to get the next one. So mark your calendars, in other words. Astronomers, professional and otherwise, can get some more information about this total lunar eclipse. It is on NASA's website. And taking a look at outside, you definitely can't see the moon or the sun, but I'm sure <laughs> the sun is going to make its way through later today, Justin. It will. And we're hoping that clouds cooperate on Tuesday for the uh, lunar eclipse. We had one earlier this year, by the way, so this is the second one. It's going to be cool to see. You'll hear more about it uh, here from the KSAT meteorologist coming up. 74 degrees so far today. 69 was the low this morning. Averages are 76 and 54. Records are 87 and 26, so it can get pretty cold. It's time of year. That was back in 1966. We don't have any of that in our forecast. It stays pretty warm, despite the fact we have a front coming through tomorrow. We'll tell you what impact that has on our weekend forecast coming up. So I was talking to Adam Kasky yesterday, and he said, check with Justin, but I think if we get rain on Friday, it's going to move pretty fast. It is. It's going to be moving through really quickly, and that's why we're not uh, too excited about rainfall totals. I mean, really, we would love to see a lot more uh, good, healthy rain. I just don't think it's in the cards. I typically don't start off with dew points, but I want to show this because I thought this was fairly interesting. This is the dew point trend over the next six days, okay? And we're going to have humid conditions today and tomorrow. But look what happened Saturday. The front comes through, and the dew point plummets. Now that's not unusual, we see that. What is unusual is that by Sunday, the humidity comes right back up. We're basically gonna have one day, I think part of Sunday too, but uh, one day where we get the dew point to drop off quickly behind this front and then it comes right back up and it's humid again. So there's not really a, a long duration here where we get uh, comfortable dew points, so to speak. Uh, and as we look outside, you can kind of just see the humidity, right? A lot of cloud cover. It is sticky out there. Dew point is up to 67, and we're sitting at 74 at the airport right now. South, southeast, the ones at 13 are bringing in all of that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. And as we look at the forecast temperatures, now what I've done here is put the clouds over top so you can kind of get an idea of where we see those breaks, and you'll see the temperatures kind of jump up a little bit. But uh, we think as we head into the afternoon, you'll start to see some 80s on the map where we do get a little bit more sun. And this model does break up the clouds some. So here in San Antonio right now, we're forecasting 83 this afternoon along with that humidity. 82 Floresville, 82 Seguin, 83 San Marcos. 
There is the current cloud cover and it's still pretty thick right over the city. But notice just to our south and east down there in Floresville, there are some of those breaks and they'll work their way up into the city here within the next few hours. So yes, the sun will pop out and there's a lot more sun as you get down to the uh, Texas coast, Beeville to Victoria over to Gonzales and starting to see some breaks down there around Laredo as well. Now we go out west and this is where all the action is, at least uh, right now across the country. A lot of snow and rain. This is the next system that's starting to work in our direction. It's another dynamic system, but the problem with it is it moves just a little too far north to give us great rain chances. So this is uh, what Adam was referring to yesterday as we put this forward into motion. Yeah, we get some clouds, some spotty showers tomorrow morning, and then our front comes in. This is around 6 o'clock. Notice there is no rain with this front. It's not until 7, 8 o'clock that we start to see some showers and storms blossom along this boundary. And the big question will be, will they form far enough south to where San Antonio gets rain? There is a scenario which San Antonio doesn't get anything. They may develop just to our east. It's going to be a very close call, but we're putting in a 30% chance of rain. And we do need to mention that if we do get storms, there could be a couple strong storms mixed in there. So by 10 o'clock, these storms are starting to progress east, affecting some of our eastern counties. And of course, the question becomes, what about Friday night football? Well, it depends on where you live. If you're west of San Antonio, Friday night football will be fine. I think even here in town, Say we do get a storm, it shouldn't last very long and the delay shouldn't be all that long. If you're east of San Antonio, that's where there could be a few more issues with some of those Friday night football games and lightning will of course keep you posted. But I think by midnight, all this is moving out and we get some clearing Saturday morning. This is the severe weather risk from the Storm Prediction Center. This darker pink color represents a slightly higher risk for severe weather and San Antonio is right on the edge of it. So I'd say east of town is where we would have the risk for some gusty winds along this line of storms. And the highest risk for severe weather is going to be up here across northeast Texas on a scale of one to five, about a three up there. And they're probably going to have a more significant outbreak. So the bottom line forecast here, storms tomorrow, this is Friday evening, 6 to 10 p.m., and the best chances will be east of San Antonio. Will we see any severe weather? There's a small window in San Antonio. Gusty winds the main threat. And your Friday night plans? I'd say keep them, but it will be a little bit breezy even behind this line of storms. And those winds will subside some as we get into Saturday. 78 sunny should be a beautiful day. 82 Sunday. Another small chance of rain on Monday and partly cloudy skies on Tuesday for Election Day. We'll be right back. Is Mike growing a beard too? He is, and Mike he actually grows a, a really nice yeah, beard. It's coming out. It's coming out. Kind of, <laughs> kind of white, yeah. but you know. Hey, hey don't forget, good. team team gray hair is what. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. Yes, that was my on. team from last year. We I was won watching actually. This morning, so. I saw you. All right, yeah. enough of growing <laughs> facial hair. We're talking food, and we got a complete meal today. That's right. It's starting with seasonal farm salads. Gabby Rodriguez is here to tell us all about it. Yes, we have some fresh seasonal produce that you can find in the nearby local area here in Texas, around 25 miles out. Eat healthy and help out local farmers. Yes, Fantastic. Then the entree, Smoky Moe's, and Chad Krause is here. National Sandwich Day. I like that. It sure is. And we're also here to talk about our Thanksgiving feast, which includes our smoked turkey. Uh, it promises to feed the entire family for Thanksgiving. Everything you need in a box from you. That's right. I like that idea. That looks amazing. Now, how about dessert, right? We're talking mm. donuts, but they're how do we say it, guys? Mini donuts. Mini donuts. Mini donuts. Mini donuts. Mini donuts. Alma Mini Donuts. Celeste Steele is joining us to talk about these. Yes, why have one donut when you can have five custom mini donuts delivered to you throughout San Antonio? So five equals one? Yes. Guilt free. We can eat all of those, Mike. And they deliver. I love that. We can deliver I, all throughout San one? Antonio. Go ahead. What is go ahead. You go right ahead. Our social question today is what would you miniaturize, right? Because those are so cute. I think Celeste really had good. a good one. We're going to save it for the show. You guys took a trip to the Hill Country, didn't you? Yes. And we're going to take you Texas tripping to a wine castle. And let me tell you, it's like the royal treatment. Get it? Yeah. Royal treatment. And there's also a really cool hotel right next to it. We're going to give you the full tour. Are you excited? Mm. His mouth is so cool, by the way. We're <laughs> going to see how many mini donuts I think we can eat in about the um, last hour. You know, here. At least I'll try. So that will a whole lot more on us. Stay live. Stick around. Well, now let's look at the forecast. We're at 76 right now. We will eventually make it into the 80s today with a little bit more sun. Expect some more fog and drizzle to start tomorrow. Then a 30% chance of storms between 6 and 10 o'clock tomorrow evening as that front comes through. Somewhat cooler, but beautiful over the weekend. 
78 Saturday, 82 and mostly sunny on Sunday. Looks great. Thank you so much, Justin. And that's all for our show. It's important to mention that SA Live starts right now with Mike and Jen. A medieval experience for wine tasting inside a hill country castle. We take you on this fun road trip today on SA Live. Plus, it's National Sandwich Day, and we enjoy sandwiches the Texas way with barbecue inside. Yum. Yes, indeed. And National Donut Day is coming up this weekend. We share how you can celebrate in a big way with mini donuts. Oh, sorry. I missed my cue. <laughs> yes. I'm excited for those. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Hello and happy Thursday. Can I make it up, Mike? It, it looks coming so at you. big right there. How do you do that? Oh, ah. wow. It's yeah. so, it's so to, to put it in perspective, <laughs> can, I, can I get the donut? No. There we go. Okay. See, it's a little <laughs> tiny little donut They're so right cute. There. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Dresky, by the way. And I'm Mike Osterage. <laughs> okay. Happy to be here. All right, he's going to take a bite. Now, donuts are a great way to start off your morning, and so we decided to start the show off with them. Our first guest today is helping us celebrate the National Donut Day coming up this weekend in a big way, or rather a mini way. <laughs> owner, owner of Alamo. Mini donut. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, enough of that. It's getting annoying. So, all right, Celeste Steele is here, and oh, these are really good donuts. Good, good. I'm glad. Happy National Donut Happy Day. Happy National Donut Day in a couple days, yes. I, I We're didn't ready get you a celebrate. card, but we, you brought us donuts. So, okay, mini donuts. What a great idea. Yes, we love it. So, we came up with this concept. Um, everyone loves a fresh donut. We make hot, fresh mini donuts, deliver them to you throughout San Antonio. Um, perfect for all your events. Um, and one of the fun things that we do are custom donuts mm -hmm. for the holidays, which are coming up. And uh, you can decorate your own donuts today. Okay, the nice thing is, because you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't eat too many. This <laughs> dozen donuts equals about how many a, regular donuts? About two regular sized donuts. Mm -hmm. Guilt free, Ooh. right? You can eat the whole box. Yes. Watch a movie, okay. have some fun. See, you okay. can eat the whole Just box. Just pop them in your mouth. That's kind of mentally satisfying. So <laughs> exactly. you also bring a donut bar to folks, right? Yes, so one of the most interactive things that we do is for parties, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, corporate events, mm -hmm. we bring our our portable donut machine uh -huh. and we're making donuts fresh for the audience to see for your guests to see and then they can custom design their donuts as uh, as we're making them so and this is what we're doing right and now. so yes, yes exactly what you guys can doing me. so a, a variety mm -hmm. of toppings here um, you know we've got maple that's a strawberry sauce mm -hmm. um, I think this is fruity pebbles is yes that's oh. a marshmallow so you might want to try the cookies and cream on top yes, of that man. With some yum chocolate on top of. How many different flavors of donuts do you have? We have over 27 different flavors, and we get kind of creative to come up with new concepts all mm -hmm. the time. That's the fun part, right? Yes. Coming up yes. with the different ideas, and you have a lot going on for the holidays. Right? Yes, absolutely. So our holiday minis are available. They're coming back now. Um, you can uh, order for your holiday parties, anniversaries, just to get the holiday all spirit, occasions. Yes. all occasions, absolutely. If you want to order, how far in advance do you need to order? So you only need 24 hours, no we only need 24 hours notice mm -hmm. and uh, we'll deliver the donuts to you um, wherever you'd like. Well, didn't you do good over there? So. <laughs> still going, still so going. Of the few dozen flavors, what's your favorite? My favorite is our French toast. So it's a sugar, it's a cinnamon sugar base with maple drizzled on top and then powdered sugar on top of that. And then my other favorite is our Funnel cake, which is a little bit of strawberry drizzle with sugar, powdered sugar on top. It tastes like a mini funnel cake, like you're at the at the yes. fair. Mm. Ooh, I love that idea. So good. <laughs> I still haven't tried one. I'm, that, go, I'm getting to it. Really I'm good getting stuff. to it. <laughs> What's the most somebody has eaten in one sitting that you've ever seen of these mini oh, donuts? Oh my gosh, when we do uh, donut bars. People are, so we put them in this, these little six count boxes they can eat. They come back four or five times. Just they're popping them in their mouth. They're coming off hot and fresh. I love that. Oh my God. People can really eat those. You can really push them back. How'd you guys come up with this idea? And I'm sure it's a hit, right? At every party. It's, <laughs> it's a perfect hit. We love donuts. Um, I'm a donut fan of all types. And we thought it would just be fun to miniaturize it. So, um, you know, kids can eat a handful at a time. Adults can feel guilt free. <laughs> <laughs> just a sampling of some of the, just the names alone make your mouth water. Of course, you mentioned funnel cake, Loco Coco, PB and J. Mm. Ooh, Strawberry Bella, Nutella Dream, Fluffer Nut. Oh, Fluffer Nutter donuts <laughs> are fantastic, and chocolate peanut butter, turtle s'mores, all sorts of goodies. And I've got something special for you guys today. We do custom mini donuts. 
Mm. So we've I'll got the one. SA Live logo on there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You weren't kidding with much. the custom. Yes, right? you can so take any anything. image, um, logo, and we can miniaturize it and put it on the donuts. I love that for a birthday party or birthday parties or something. Mm -hmm. New hire trainings. There you go. Any way to brand yourself. Special deals going on? Yes, so this weekend for National Donut Day, if you buy an uh, order dozen, you get a dozen free. Really? Yes. Really oh, look at us. Like we just learned about this. Okay, awesome. You know, there's one danger to the mini one because again, you I just know. keep popping. I'm about to pop this one. And you don't know how many. <laughs> I didn't have to talk. I was, but you did. It makes it so easy. Okay. But that's uh, okay. And your kids, do they get involved in helping? And again, oh my gosh, yes. Husband? My kids love to get in there and just get crazy with the toppings. I mean, they've come up with toppings that don't make sense, but they love to eat it probably because it's sugar. Yes. <laughs> so have they created any of the flavors? They haven't different? created any uh -huh. flavors, but they do like to get. Um, they like to get in and help us come up with ideas for our custom ones. So for the Christmas ones, the little, you know, snowmen and gingerbread. And, and you've got boxes of half dozen, dozen, and then what is that? This is a 20, yeah, so a 24 count. We do uh, a dozen. And then we also have a three pack for party favors, mm -hmm. weddings, uh -huh. anniversaries, and then a six count also. A little three pack. Oh. I love that. Yes. How can people order from you? What's the best way? Yes, so you can visit us at our website. It's alamominidonuts.com. Um, send us a message, place your order for delivery. We're also on Instagram and Facebook at Alamo Mini Donuts. Look how pretty they are. I'm sure you get a lot of people tagging you too, right? Yes. So send the photos, right? <laughs> Share the photos. Absolutely. We it. love to see guests eat them and enjoy. Thank you so much, Celeste. For more information on Alamo Mini Donuts, you can head over to mm. salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab where we provided the link or that QR code right there on your screen. You can scan that to, to get your information as well. Thank you, Celeste. Thank you. Okay, so mini donuts are very convenient. You know, you just pop them in your mouth. Boom, so boom. it got us thinking, what would be a food that you would like to make mini? Okay, Celeste had a good one. <laughs> He's popping that guy in. The so I would totally do mini enchiladas. That's Ooh, so I good. like that. Everyone loves an enchilada from San Antonio. You gotta have yes, this. Yes, that's a good one. Because there's good already one. mini burgers like yes. sliders and all that. We I said do, tacos, but they're already do a tacos. mini steak and, and toast baked uh, potatoes, something like that. But I like the, the enchilada thing. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy likes it too. Okay, we got a little guest there. Okay, I mean, say mini brisket. How about that? Little mini brisket? Yeah. No, big no? brisket. I know. Yeah, you want all the brisket. It's not going to work. Let Texas. us know if you have an idea for a mini food, <laughs> okay. and hopefully we can show some of your ideas a little bit later on. Try. Okay, so from me, me, mini donuts, donuts <laughs> to big adventures. <laughs> yes, today's Texas trip and takes you to the hill country to a wine castle, but also, you know, you can have a tasting down in the dungeon. Oh, cool. I can keep going, but I'm just going to let you see the story. Take a look. It's an experience that combines the royal treatment with some fun, quirky rooms. We take you inside for the full experience. Bentley Hotel is located off Highway 290 in Johnson City, right next to the distinct Wine Castle. Most people can't help but notice the prominent stone walls, but its newest sister business has only been open for a few months. Already, it's bringing in visitors from all over. Each room is themed, so we've got a James Bond room, Clint Eastwood room, Audrey Hepburn, uh, a Beatles room, everything like that. We try to provide kind of a resort type experience out here in the hill country. Um, there's always room for new hotels and lodging. We provide a cabana bar that's open until late in the night and uh, it's kind of just for the guests as opposed to our castle. Now time to take a look inside some of the rooms. There's one suite dedicated to Audrey Hepburn. Complete with their signature flamingos, you can find them in just about every room here. There's also a James Bond inspired room. Complete with all the fun decor. Pop by the Sailor Man. Yes, the room includes a can of spinach. Um, we have 14 rooms every weekend since we've opened four months ago. Um, we've been packed every weekend. Uh, we're soon going to expand it from weekend only uh, to week long access, which um, we're looking forward to. And if you stay here, you'll be just a walk away from the wine castle. Castle on a hill kind of speaks for itself. Um, they opened it about four years ago go kind of mid 2018 just in time for covid uh it's um they managed to get through it though like you know i, I from what i heard the entire 
community of wineries out here kind of stuck together for the first time with that and it was a uh, kind of unique 11 months out of the year we have a private tasting dungeon cellars private seating uh, we'll pair food cheeses wines with our uh, offering we don't want someone to be able to go and get the same experience or the same wine that we are offering elsewhere and I think that kind of sets us apart in a way. All right two great experiences in one location here in Johnson City so whether you're going to stay at the Bentley Hotel or maybe just come to the wine castle and enjoy the day the weather is great during the fall so definitely want to plan your trip maybe have a charcuterie and a lovely glass of wine for SA Live. I'm Jen Tobias Jusky. Cheers. How cool. Okay, yes, and I went to another stop. We couldn't get to that today, so I will take you there sometime later this month. It's called High Tie, and they have a new brick and mortar, and as you can see, it's delicious looking, and it tastes just as good as it looks, so we'll take you there later this month. I don't know what looked better in that closing shot of yours, the wine and the charcuterie, or the view the behind. View. Wasn't that gorgeous? Oh, See, my goodness go gracious. Mm -hmm. All right, for more information on the Wine Castle and the Bentley Inn, head over to SALive.com. We have provided a link, or just click mm. on that, uh, or scan that QR code right there <laughs> on your screen. All right, when SA Live continues with a healthier lunch option, we make seasonal farm fresh salads made with locally grown produce. But before we get to the salads, we celebrate National Sandwich Day with Texas Barbecue. Smokey Moe's Barbecue joins us with the Big Mo Sandwich. It's lunchtime next on SA Live.